Hello, and welcome to the Art Ambassador Show. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We're coming to you from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thanks for joining us today. The aim of the Art Ambassador Radio Show is to bring art into the conversation. We're going to talk about art, artists, and the world of art in all its various forms. There's, there's so much to say. One of my favorite topics is how important it is for artists to get their art out into the world so that your work can be part of the conversation, too. In our first three sessions of the Art Ambassador Show, we talked extensively with a number of artists about the struggles and the challenges that artists have in getting their work out into the larger world where it can be seen, shown, and sold. We learned how artists have overcome those challenges and found the right path for themselves. And this is no small task for many people. It's one of my favorite topics because I have worked with many artists to lose the struggle and be more intentional. And as a result, to move your art out into the world and out of the shadows. Another favorite topic of mine is the world of art galleries, since I owned an art gallery for over 20 years in Chicago. Even now, I love to visit galleries and see the different shows of all kinds of art. It's like food for me. I need it to survive. I'm not, if I'm not visiting a gallery, I feel like I'm missing something essential, like a good meal. There are all kinds of galleries out there, and they're all over the place, in cities, towns, artsy communities, in tourist spots, or in out-of-the-way places that we come to call destination galleries. All kinds of artwork is represented there. As someone who goes to a lot of galleries and has seen all kinds of art, my definition of art has actually been broadened as a result of all this exposure. Visiting a lot of galleries has also made me understand that there's quite a bit of misconception that both artists and the public have about what goes on in a gallery. I invited gallery owner Doug Casina from Denver to the show today to talk about this and other issues facing galleries and artists. So we're going to have a lively conversation with Doug. Galleries are still the form of representation that most artists aspire to, no matter where you are in your career. They have the ability to reach out to a public and to art world professionals that artists don't have just because of the fact that they are public. But that's not all. When an artist and gallery work together, it's a reciprocal relationship. You're on a team, and the goal is to work together to present your art. You have a partner in representing, marketing, selling, promoting. The benefits for an artist are very real. Because of all the things that artists have to do, it can be overwhelming, in addition to spending time in the studio. So with a gallery, you have someone to share that with. And you also have the benefit of the other person's knowledge and input. Galleries are great for artists, and I often hear that artists would like to find the right gallery to represent them. I also hear a lot of complaints and disappointment and feelings that the relationship hasn't worked out to the way they dreamt or expected. But truly, there are thousands of galleries to choose from, so finding the right one for you could be a a process. And it could be also like trying to find a gallery in a haystack. But for many artists, it's worth it's a worthwhile goal. And I'd like you to think about a few things before so that you think about if you're ready and you're prepared, such as, is your art right for the particular gallery that you're looking at? And are you the kind of person who would work well with a gallery? Gallery representation is probably for you if you've reached a certain level in your career and you aspire to more, if you want more representation and you want a partner to work with. Here are some things that I've listed that I think are important for artists to know. Uh, You want to be an accomplished artist and have a good exhibition and sales record. This all is background that will give you great experience that 
will take you forward. You also want to have a consistent style and a current body of work that's based on a solid idea. As an artist, you want to be professional, too. You want to come to this with good ability to talk about your work, to be organized, and to have the documentation on your art, all those things that are uh, important in the background. You also want to be able to adhere to deadlines and show up for shows. This is critical because galleries rely on you. And they rely on having your artwork in their galleries at specific times. They represent you best when you are reliable and you really explain to them what your artwork is all about. Uh, This came up for me recently when I was at a gallery and I was there during the setup of, of a show and I asked about the artwork and it was a new body of work and the, the gallery dealer actually said, well, you know, I haven't gotten that information yet. I'm hoping to get it in the next two hours. So ga- galleries rely on you to be responsible. Now, if you're a good member of a gallery partnership, you also will um, think of it as a partnership ship and hold work to hold up your end of the bargain and understand what your role is in that relationship. And don't let resentments or misunderstandings get in the way. Keep that line of communication open. Uh, And remember to show up. So galleries are not for everyone, and many artists have felt left out of that process. It often seems like a closed group, so you might want to reach out for help if you have trouble navigating that part, because galleries are really interested in artists, and they know that they rely on artists, and they have to have artists. Uh, Without the artists, they wouldn't exist. Galleries are still seen as the highest level of relationship, so... Even though the world of art has changed in the last decade, galleries are still um, something to consider for an artist in terms of going to the highest level of their art career. There are more galleries and more powerful galleries than ever before, and it's turned districts of art, such as Chelsea in New York and River North in Chicago, into vital areas of cities. And many are seen as up-and-coming neighborhoods that you just don't want to miss being a part of. But today, there are more options for people to find art And galleries have had to become creative in keeping their audience interested and engaged. They're constantly thinking about ways to uh, fulfill their goals of presenting art, reaching the public, and of course, selling the art. It's a lot to take on. In order to survive, they have needed to adapt to the changing times. This is a fascinating and complex issue with many sides to it. I talk a lot about gallery representation for artists in my book, Nine Steps to Artistic Freedom. Before I bring on my next guest, my first guest, Doug Casina, we're going to take a short break. And you might take this moment to order the book so you have the information in hand. The link is bit.ly slash order nine steps, and that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash order nine steps. So we're going to take a break right now, and when we come back, we're going to have a chance to talk with Doug Casina. This is Gwenda Joyce. I'm your host of the Art Ambassador Radio Show, coming to you from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Art Ambassador. We're coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. I'd like to introduce you to my guest, who is an artist and gallery owner from Denver, Colorado, Doug Casina. Doug Casina engaged with the arts. Hi, Doug. We're so pleased to have you here. I know that you engaged with the arts at a very young age, and you began showing your abstract works during college in Boulder. And then Doug continued to show regionally and nationally, and later became the co-founder and director of Gallery 13 and Evergreen Fine Art Gallery. So his involvement with galleries goes way back. 
Doug believes also in strongly, strongly in supporting the art community, and he's very active in the Colorado arts community. Currently, he's the co-owner of a art studio's building, and over the years, he's continued his role working with galleries and as an exhibiting artist. Doug is a busy guy. This year, he created a whole new kind of gallery partnership, and I'm really interested in finding out more about this. He's got two partners, 1261 Gallery and a Bend Gallery, and he became the co-owner and director of K Contemporary Art Gallery. In this new partnership, the three galleries share spaces in one building, and there are two floors, and the spaces are divided up in really interesting ways. Doug's first show in the new space just opened last weekend with neon artist Scott Young. I had the opportunity to visit the new gallery space in September when it was still under construction with my group of artists and collectors, and we were on a tour from Art Ambassador Tours. I found the concept that Doug and his partners have put together to be so exceptional that I wanted to make sure I brought him on the show to talk about it. So here we are with Doug Casino. Welcome, Doug. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you about what we're doing here in Denver. Fantastic. Well, I want to hear about the galleries, of course, but I feel like we should start talking about your art. You're an abstract painter, and your your expressive brushstrokes convey movement, energy, and motion. They're gestural sweeps of the paint-laden brush, and they fill large canvases with color and texture. One reviewer described your work as pure fearlessness. I agree. So I'd like to hear about a project that you had last year. I thought it was a really interesting idea, a show called Cross Currents. Your idea was to paint over paintings by other artists, primarily representational artists, and combined with your abstraction, see what came of it. This was such a novel idea. Tell me about you know, what the results were of, of this kind of approach. It just sounds fantastic. Well, you know, for me, it was a really kind of interesting study. Uh, One thing I noticed was uh, being a contemporary uh, abstract artist, and then also at the same time, I was the director of a a very high-end, traditional, uh, even Western slanting gallery in Evergreen. Um, I noticed that there wasn't really a lot of crossover between uh, collectors, galleries, and artists uh, in the two styles. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, one opening I went to, uh, a really prominent artist here in Colorado, uh, Kwong Ho, uh, was having an exhibition, uh, and uh, uh, there was a gallery right next door to him where another good friend of mine was having uh, a contemporary exhibition opening. And, and the two artists, even in a town the size of Denver, uh, had no idea uh, of each other's work, um, and I thought it was kind of uh, uh, kind of unusual um, because they were both so prominent. Uh, so what I found out was collectors and, and artists tend to kind of put on blinders towards the work that they're most attracted to, and they don't show up at, uh, you know, uh, traditional representational artists and collectors typically don't go to contemporary galleries and vice versa. Um, I've heard kind of on the explanation of each side where uh, from the traditional representational side, I I often hear about uh, contemporary and conceptual artwork that maybe they just don't get it. Um, Often I've heard the, oh, my kid could do that uh, about contemporary artwork or, um, you know, that it's not art. And from the contemporary and conceptual side, I've heard kind of similar uh, dialogue about uh, more traditional work, um, such as, you know, with a landscape or traditional still life that it's been done for thousands of years and it's not contributing to the the conversation of artwork or that it's decoration or on the extreme again it's not art and for me I thought it was quite unusual that uh, you know on both extremes of that conversation people flat out dismissed uh, some other creative expression as not being art um, 
so that that's kind of was the jumping off point for this. So I, I wanted to do an exhibition uh, where uh, we kind of talked about what similarities we had as artists as opposed to the differences and hopefully uh, create a, a larger dialogue about the art itself. That's such a great premise. Uh, we we see this phenomenon in the world a lot today, don't we? Where instead of thinking about how we're similar, we're only thinking about how we're different, and we're kind of posturing and positioning ourselves as as being on different sides. Whereas, really, in the larger picture, we have a lot. That is the same, and a lot that that we want that is the same. And art can be a way, I've always felt, of bringing people together and uh, sharing the humanness that we have and finding that point of connection between us as individuals. And you've, you, in this exhibition, just hit on a point that, uh, you know, is so basic to the way we are as people, that that there are similarities and let's explore them. Uh, how did the artists feel when they had a chance to start exploring these things? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, it, it, it was a really difficult con- uh, process uh, and it started with a lot of awkward conversations. Um, you know, I, I approached 12 of, uh, I wanted to keep it uh, primarily, uh, you know, uh, Colorado-based artists, so I approached 12 I'm an artist, uh, and uh, and uh, um, uh, you know, uh, and ask them if I could paint over their original paintings. That must have been shocking, but as I read about this, I, I see ultimately that they really did uh, find the project to be stimulating, and it created a dialogue and gave opportunities for them to stretch. So I think ultimately, even though it was controversial, I'd like to hear more about uh, how it worked after we take a short break. This is Gwenda Joyce, and I'm here with Doug Casina, artist and gallery owner from Denver, Colorado. Um, We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back with more fascinating stories of the art world. Hello, and welcome back to the Art Ambassador radio show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce, and I'm here with artist and gallery owner Doug Kusinma from Denver, who was just telling us about a fascinating show called Cross Currents that he organized last year, uh, in which he got abstract artists and representational artists to paint on each other's paintings. Such a great idea, and I know it was challenging. Doug, uh, tell us how the show was received and if you think it achieved its purpose, ultimately. Well, well, I certainly do. Um, So the exhibition, uh, you know, it really started off as a a conceptual exhibition. Uh, The concept was that I was going to paint over uh, the paintings of uh, 12 of the region's uh, top representational artists, and I wanted it to also be, you know, kind of a two-way dialogue. I didn't just want it to be me imposing, uh, you know, my aesthetics or recontextualizing uh, the artwork of the other artists. I wanted it to absolutely be a, a back and forth. So I offered up a dozen of my paintings, or it ended up being 15 of my paintings, um, to them to paint as well. Uh, so artists uh, even took Ron Hicks, uh, who gave me a $35,000 painting of his to paint over. I uh, actually selected one of my paintings uh, right off the wall of the art, of the, the gallery uh, to uh, paint over one of mine as well. So this concept show really then turned into a bit of performance art. And uh, it was a little bit difficult to do because the whole uh, – the whole exhibit was being filmed for a PBS special. Uh, David Schler uh, with Schler Productions, um, who kind of specializes in art documentary, uh, was in our studios uh, filming us painting over each other's paintings, um, uh, which added another layer of uh, kind of pressure to this exhibit already when I was painting over, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of other people's original artwork. And what you ended up seeing in the gallery um, was kind of the remnants of that performance. 
Um, it, it really, uh, when you saw the work in context of the others, it, it was quite wonderful. Um, I, I don't know if everybody kind of understood, um, you know, the direction of what I was taking uh, for that project. And, and certainly I received uh, not only uh, a lot of accolades and a, a lot of national press for it, uh, but I got a fair amount of hate mail, which I thought was pretty fabulous. Well, that's controversial, and there's nothing like hate mail to, to stimulate a conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm looking forward to the, seeing the uh, the film that's going to be on the radio, uh, on the show. And I wanted to just, uh, do you feel like this was a su- successful venture, Doug? No, oh, it, it, it absolutely was. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we, I think we really got that conversation going and, and really engaged a lot of viewers. Um, you, you know, that's really what it, that show was supposed to be about, was uh, starting the conversation, you know, starting to get people to think of why they uh, look at art in certain terms, uh, maybe, uh, you know, hopefully spread that conversation to a larger viewpoint. Uh, I think that's what the PBS special is starting to go in that direction. Um, That whole body of work was created during the last election cycle. And certainly I was using, uh, you know, kind of the representational traditional artwork uh, versus the, you know, contemporary conceptual artwork as a metaphor for, uh, you know, our religious beliefs, our political beliefs, all of these things that we kind of get locked into and, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, are dismissive of other people's beliefs that are outside of ours. And I think that art is, was a, a, a great way to start that conversation. Well, indeed it is. And this show sounds to me to be very typical of the way you think as an artist. And you've taken that attitude out into you the building of the galleries that you're working with, that who are your partners, and the gallery that you are the co-owner of, K Contemporary Art. Can you tell us about what you've created? Because what I feel like what you've created is very new in terms of collaboration, and it's also very exciting. So you've got well, three well, owners. Certainly. Yeah. So yeah. tell us. Well, 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 certainly. So the the three galleries that we have are K Contemporary, which, as you indicated earlier, is a a brand new gallery that we just opened this Saturday uh, with the, the extraordinary works of Scott Young, a, a neon artist who's uh, uh, both out of Colorado and L.A. and has some really exciting work that kind of deals with love in the digital age. Um, it's a it's a really kind of immersive show, and that's kind of what I'll be doing with K Contemporary or kind of these new. Uh, you know, I want it to be experiential when you come into the gallery um, and, and take the work on uh, within the context of the entire body uh, that, that's presented. Uh, my partners uh, in the gallery are uh, the entity of 1261, uh, which Gallery 1261 uh, represents uh, the premier artists within the representational field. Uh, so think about Jeremy Mann and Daniel Sprick and Vincent Zeus and Kwang Ho and Scott Fraser. Uh, just uh, premier artists who are masters within their field. And then also uh, the 12, uh, our other partner is a band. And the band gallery um, is a, a somewhat emerging, uh, maybe even mid-career artist, and uh, kind of runs the gamut from more traditional work uh, to contemporary work as well. Um, so each gallery has a completely unique feel, uh, has a you know its own separate LLC, although we do have uh, you know similar ownership, um, but they're really their their own unique uh, experience. Um, so I, I guess to maybe I, I'm not sure if you want background of why we ended up into a partnership with each other. Um, it's it's kind of the classic story of uh, you know right now in Denver it's a bit of a boom town. Uh, uh, the the property taxes over at a bend uh, were going through the roof, and the rent at 1261 uh, was uh, about to go to the point where it wasn't going to be able to uh, afford an artillery to operate. Um, so with that, we had to look at how we did business and, and what we could do uh, thinking forward to do it in a different way. 
Well, it looks like you've come up with a solution that uh, helps to give each of you the space that you need and share resources and even maybe share audiences. We're going to be taking a break right now, and when we get back, we'll hear, hear more from Doug Kasima about the galleries in Den- Denver that he's a part of. This is the radio show of the Art Ambassador. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce, and we're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So hello, this is Gwenda Joyce and the radio show Art Ambassador. I'm coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. My guest, Doug Casina, is from Denver, and he's telling us about the challenges that galleries have faced and how he and two partner galleries uh, decided to merge their resources and create something new. So tell us uh, tell us some more about some of the problems that you faced as galleries that you've been able to resolve with this new form of uh, exhibitions that you've got. So, well, yeah, that's what I was explaining right before the break. Um, because of the kind of boomtown growth that we've been having here in Denver, uh, the previous locations of my partner galleries uh, were no longer viable financially. Um, so that kind of started us looking at uh, kind of a new direction to go uh, as a gallery. Um, and, and as you, you're all well aware, <clears throat> um, the gallery uh, paradigm has changed dramatically uh, over the last 10 years. It's not uh, as well as every uh, kind of retail situation has. Um, both of my partner galleries, 1261 and a band, uh, you know, 70 to 80% of their sales are online nowadays, um, which for me, um, being, uh, such an art enthusiast, uh, I have studios here in Denver. I'm an artist and a gallerist. Um, you know, it, it's a little hard for me to wrap around my, uh, the idea of not being able to engage with the artwork and purchasing it purely from, uh, from an online experience. Um, and so I kind of realized, I think uh, it's more of this idea of showrooming uh, that we see in uh, kind of uh, the retail environment. So what I think is happening is people engage with artwork in some way. Maybe they're familiar with an artist from uh, print advertising or from magazines. They've, they've seen the work in um, uh, another gallery. And, and what they do is they go online and they look where else that artwork is available um, because now the work has been vetted for them. Uh, so I really feel a lot of what the new role for the gallery, and it's, it's kind of, I guess, a, just a, a, a different way of what the old role was too, was uh, this idea of vetting the work, um, of, of presenting work that we are saying that, hey, we're really engaged with this. This is important work that we want to share. Um, so keeping that in mind, uh, the idea of how do you still have a really gorgeous brick and mortar um, presence, but also be able to really engage people online. And so we've really came up with a strategy that I think is really interesting as, as a gallery. So we ended up taking over uh, the entirety of a building in uh, lower downtown in Denver, which is a, a really engaging part of town. It's right near where our the, kind of the central hub of town is. And uh, we took over three floors of a building there, the entire building. Uh, so the lower floor is primarily uh, custom built um, uh, storage for our work. We have about 2000 paintings uh, in storage there. Um, and we've kind of designed that space around the idea of, you know, like an art library or a wine cellar uh, because we want people to come down uh, into that space and engage with it and, and discover artwork in that way. Um, and then we have two distinct exhibition spaces on the, the other two floors of the building. Um, one is more, uh, I would say, kind of uh, has that white cube type of feeling of a space. Uh, each space has 15 foot high ceilings and is a, a, a macro space. The, the upper gallery is more kind of uh, uh, exposed brick and has kind of to, and feels more of, a, of an urban space for sure. Um, and what we what we're offering is we're offering 24 exhibitions per year uh, between the three galleries. Um, 
So about four on each floor per gallery per year. Um, so each gallery is presenting eight exhibitions in house. Um, we also that takes have, a lot um, of lot of pressure off of a gallery to not mount regular monthly shows, which can really really be difficult for a gallery to maintain. So I think that that sounds like a really good program. Well, they, yeah, we we think that eight shows is a fantastic amount of shows, um, yes. but also part of what we're doing too is we're trying to look at how we use space in a different way. Um, so we're doing actually a lot more stuff outside of the gallery than we are inside. Uh, so we've been doing a series of pop-up exhibitions in LA right now. Um, we are, uh, as far as K Contemporary goes, we're doing the, the national and international art fair scene. Uh, we're also doing space takeovers with other galleries. Uh, we're doing off-site locations uh, where we're engaging uh, small uh, the, you know, uh, the, uh, smaller, almost solo shows and really engaging venues that are outside of the gallery. Um, part of that That's is because... That's really great. And I, you also were talking to me about this 80-20 idea you have. And so I know you're putting a lot of effort into making your exhibitions have uh, this an element of engagement or maybe interaction where the interest is in creating an experience for the viewer, not solely uh, a sales situation. Absolutely. You know, especially for Cake Contemporary. Cake Contemporary, uh, my whole goal with that is I want it to be an engagement. I, I don't want people to come into the gallery and look at individual uh, pieces of artwork and, and say, does this resonate with me, yes or no, and go on to the next work. Um, yeah, I want them to address the artwork uh, in a manner that takes into context the entirety of the show. Well, that's very exciting and really important to hear how gallery owners think about putting together their shows to make a, a really engaging and enjoyable experience for the viewer. Uh, this is Gwenda Joyce. I'm here on the Art Ambassador radio show with my guest, Doug Casina, and we're going to find out more about his gallery in Denver and being an artist there after the break. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. We'll be right Hello, and welcome back to the Art Ambassador Radio Show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce, and I'm here with Doug Casina, who has been talking about this fascinating way he and two other galleries have merged together to pre present artwork and have ongoing active exhibition schedules uh, with each of their own artists, but they're, they've come up with a cost saving uh, and a, a solution that helps them reduce their overhead by doing things like sharing staff and uh, other ways that have really helped them move forward to make sure they're, they're sustainable as individual galleries. So Doug, I'm, I'm just fascinated. I really find that this has an opportunity for keeping your programs going. And that's something that all of us in the art world like to know is going to happen. We want to make sure our favorite galleries are there and that we can continue to see shows. And we also want to know as artists, um, how, how do you and the different galleries um, receive the, the uh, potential new artists? Do you have ongoing programs? So, you know, if, if I were an artist and I was interested in your gallery, what would you be looking for? What, what might a process be? Absolutely. Well, I think every gallery has their own unique way of searching out artists. Um, for me personally, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of uh, research that I do in the field. I, I'm always looking uh, online at uh, artwork, and I, I think sometimes there's kind of a rabbit hole trail that you find uh, uh, where an artist kind of jumps out at you. Um, as far as submissions go, um, I think every gallery has their own way of doing that, too. Uh, some galleries ask you to fill out a prospectus uh, where, you know, they, it's almost like a questionnaire. Um, 
but I would say most galleries, uh, well, first and foremost, don't ever come in uh, with artwork under your arms uh, and expect, you know, the, the gallery director or owner to be able to review your work right there. I think that's every gallery's faux pas <laughs> is the, the primary reason for that is, uh, you, you know, if, if, if that person is with a client or in a situation where it's just not the right timing, it, it kind of creates an awkward situation. So I think most galleries uh, would like you to first uh, contact them via email uh, with links to the work, uh, maybe to your website, uh, so that they can start their process of uh, due diligence, um, which includes all of those things you mentioned in the introduction. We, you know, depending on what level of a gallery is, they certainly want to know that uh, you're a safe business decision, uh, for lack of a better way of explaining it. Uh, they want to see a history of sales. They want to see that you have engagement. They want to see that uh, you have a following on social media and that when entering into this partnership with the artist, uh, that, uh, you know, you'll be able to help us uh, represent you in a really dynamic way. You talked with me about something you call the artist development program. And I was really impressed with when you started talking about that. Could you explain that a little bit more? Absolutely. So for me, with the artists that I represent, um, I truly uh, feel that um, it needs to be as much of a partnership as possible. I noticed in all of my gallery experiences, the artists that I kept engaged with and had regular conversations with were all the, always the ones that uh, had the best results, that had continuing sales, that I always got the newest, freshest work from, and we were able to do great things together. Uh, so with my uh, kind of artist development program, what I'm asking my artists is I want to know what their goals are as an artist. Um, if there's an artist who, uh, let's say, is really interested in uh, – uh, getting their work in front of, uh, you know, a museum crowd at LACMA. Uh, I want to know that uh, so that when they have an exhibition up or we're engaging at a, an art fair, that I can uh, send an email to uh, those uh, curators um, and, and make that action uh, without knowing what your goals are as an artist. Uh, I can't help you achieve those. And that's something that I'm really interested in doing. Um, I, I personally uh, think the idea of the starving artist needs to disappear from our lexicon. I think that it's a, a bit of a myth, um, this idea that, uh, you know, when you pass away, your artwork's going to be worth a fortune. Uh, that maybe happened once or twice in our history. And we, we all look towards that, uh, you know, Vincent Van Gogh type of uh, uh, scenario as an example, but I, I feel artists um, contribute in a really, really important way um, to our society, and they're incredibly well trained. It takes a lot of money and a lot of effort to uh, to do this type of work, and they should absolutely be paid for it, and absolutely be able to make a living. And it certainly is possible. And and uh, and uh, uh, I want to help them do that. Well, I'm with you completely, Doug. I think the myth of a starving artist is just a myth, and we need to bring it out from the shadows and and start talking about ways to uh, present and and promote and just bring to the top all the wonderful artwork that is out there being made and. It doesn't belong in the studios being hidden. It belongs out there on view. Uh, I really appreciate that you've put some thought into creating uh, what you feel and you and your partners feel is the is an optimum way optimal way to move forward. Uh, would as, as we are about to close up today, I wonder if you have any thoughts about uh, you know what are your biggest challenges? that you face as a gallery, just in terms of working with the public? Uh, you know, is there anything you feel like you'd like Absolutely. to work on next? Well, you know, for me, I think it's all about uh, uh, education again. I, I feel like, uh, you know, arts education has really disappeared from uh, of our school systems. 
I, I feel that, uh, uh, you know, one of my personal missions is to really engage the public outside of the walls of the gallery. I know that there can be an intimidation factor for people coming into the gallery, and there shouldn't be. Um, you know, I really want people to uh, start to get engaged with it and, and, and really figure out how they can involve themselves with art. Um, you know, we're in kind of a, a fast food type of society and culture nowadays where uh, there's a lot of trends that come and go. And, and art is a, a real beautiful handmade um, engagement with who we are as, as, as people and in this culture. So I, I think just kind of uh, reengaging people with how important art is, is one of my personal battles. Well, thank you so much for all that you contribute, Doug. I appreciate it, and I'm sure our audience uh, will all, does also appreciate it. And, and it just shows what a big opportunity we have to reach out and to involve more people, because art is for everyone. Art is about expressing yourselves and, be, and communicating that human uh, essence that we all have. So I want to thank you so much, Doug, for joining me here. I'm going to be taking a, a short break and I'll be back. This is Gwenda Joyce, your host of the Art Ambassador radio program. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay with us. We'll be Hello, and welcome back to the Art Ambassador radio show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. Thank you for joining us with our guest, with my guest today, Doug Casina. And thank you to Doug for giving us so much information about what it's like to own and work in a gallery. Uh, his, he has a unique perspective as both a gallery owner and a longtime exhibiting artist. And I hope that you found that his thoughts uh, ha helped dispel some of the myths that are out there. He's a real champion for artists and for creating that experience of art that we all can enjoy. And he's also a real champion for having relationships uh, be open and transparent. And I truly uh, believe, I agree, that the more we talk about the art and the value of art and the way artists contribute to our world, the better it is for all of us. There are a couple of gallery myths that I want to dispel, and, and I think the first one is that people who work in galleries just sit around doing nothing, waiting for someone to walk in the door. Uh, there's actually an incredible amount of work to do behind the scenes, and it's very diverse kind of work. Some has to do with art and planning of shows, and a lot has to do with people. Uh, the relationships between the artists and the collectors and the general public. That's what I liked about owning a gallery and working in a gallery was the people contact. All different kinds of people are drawn to art. It, it's not stratified by socio or economic uh, background. And the goal of the gallery is to make it look like everything just magically was put into place. But truthfully, it takes a lot of effort and planning and creativity. Another myth is that galleries are just in it for the money and they don't care about their artists. And I know that's not true at all. Yes, certainly galleries need to focus on their clients and they do put a lot of effort into that. But they're also really interested in the relationships with the artists. And thirdly, another myth is that um, artists are not important and that galleries are, don't care to look at new work. Galleries are in partnership with artists and they're always looking at new work. It may not be the best fit for that gallery. So 99% of the artwork is probably not going to be represented by the gallery, but most galleries are still going to be open to looking. Uh, it, Working with a gallery can be a great solution for artists. And if you're looking for a gallery, it's really important to do your research before you submit your work. 
so many artists submit their galleries, their work to galleries that are completely wrong for them. And I really caution you against it. It creates bad will. Uh, I spend a lot of time talking about gallery representation and the preparation for artists that uh, will really help, help you step up and find the best galleries for you. If you are interested, it is possible, and I encourage you to um, pursue that avenue. My name is Gwenda Joyce. I love having you here. If you have questions for me, please email them at, to gwenda at artambassador.net, and I'll answer them next week while we'll be talking to another gallery owner.